What's going on YouTube? I'm at Dan here. Hope you guys are having an amazing week so far. As I promised, we're going to be doing a cooking show today to kind of lighten up the mood a little bit. This is a less serious video from what we normally do. And here with us is our special guest, Ardap Croson. So uh, what are we going to be making today, Croson? Okay, so it's going to be a, a typical jailhouse burrito, uh, various meats. We have chicken, uh, pink salmon, and some tuna. And we also have some summer sausage. So I'm going to show a couple different ways to make a different varieties of uh, burritos and some of the stuff you might not see on your commissary list as far as the cheese we they do have cheese but what I'm saying is this is a better value of cheese uh, the cheese that you'll have is a, a cheese that has like a, a stabilizer in it so it won't rot out or not and um, so what would you say step one is into making these jailhouse burritos step one would be all the prep work I so we're going to kind of jump into this here and before we get started make sure if you haven't done so go ahead and tap that subscribe button make sure you hit the bell that way you get notifications for upcoming videos and if you haven't got your RDAP Dan wristband yet there's a link in the description of the video the wristbands are absolutely free we do accept donations and remember all the donations we accept go to people that are in prison right now that are less fortunate that are struggling that maybe need commissary hygiene products or some warm clothes for the winter time None of it goes to us. 100% of the donations go to help people in prison. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and kind of jump into this video. All right, first of all, you're not going to have one of these in prison, but there will be uh, butter knives in some prisons. They have butter knives to use. Uh, you might have to use a top of a can, which cuts pretty good actually, but you will not want to get caught with either one. Well, the butter knife is cool, but first I'm going to cut the summer sausage. I like to take the plastic off unless you like to eat plastic. So we're going to unwrap this. Set this to the side. I like to cut mine in half first. not your typical meat but it actually turns out pretty good well I cooked on the street so I mean I just like to cook and I was hungry and I got tired of eating some of the chow food it can get pretty uh, same all the time Yeah, so I would make burritos and sell them for like four to five stamps depending on what they had in them. I'd also uh, make like fried rice and stuff. That's going to be on a later segment. Fried rice and burrito. We might make so first of all, we're going to put the summer sausage in a plastic bowl, which you'll have off commissary. Some people like to season the meat, but I don't like to season the meat because it's already got so much salt and preservatives already in it, so I like to keep it fresh and then I'll just throw it in there just like this. All right, we're gonna put the meat in the microwave. I usually give it about two minutes to start with. We can get ready to uh, start the rice. This is minute rice. This is what you're gonna get in jail, instant rice. how you measure your rice. However much rice you use, you might as well just use it all. Stop the microwave. Give this a quick little stir. See all the fats and juices and stuff. It's a lot of fat um, juice you'll be seeing coming out of the summer sausage. Then I'll throw it back in the microwave. So I use this much rice. I'm gonna put it in a bowl. And then we're gonna get the water. Preferably hot as water you can get. They usually have hot pots and stuff or hot water spouts in the prison. And 
Now this is where the seasonings come in. First we have a Saison Goya. Then we have minced garlic. We have some seasoning salt. Some more uh, minced onions. Mrs. Dash. And some lemon pepper. This is the key ingredients for the rice. Take this summer sausage. I like to drain the fat. Some people like to use the fat for beans and whatnot since we don't have no dry beans. Our beans are already cooked. But that's all flavor right there. It's nice and uh, put it back in there for a little bit more. About one more minute. You can get all these seasonings in prison. Might not be name brand as far as Larry's. They do have Mrs. Dash at some places. They used to have it at Sheridan when I was there. Different flavors. We have minced onion. They do have and minced garlic. Might be a different brand. I know it's on a different brand. And they do have lemon pepper. And they do have Saison Goya at most prisons. So, here we go with this. I'll just dump a whole pack in the water. Then I will take a little bit of garlic. Don't be shy, but don't over season. Some minced onions. You never have too much onions. I like onions. Mrs. Dash. You might think, uh, yeah, he's putting a lot of uh, flavor into this this water. And some seasoning salt. Don't need a lot of salt because the meat's already salty. And a little bit of lemon pepper. So that's all of our seasonings thus far. Then I'll take this and I'll stir it up. Just a little bit, just get it incorporated. And then here it goes to the rice. What the water does to the, to the seasonings, is as far as the minced garlic is dried, high dehydrated, it hydrates the flavor. So now I will get the minute rice going. I'm going to pull out the summer sausage. Summer sausage is nice and cooked. Now we're going to stick the rice in the microwave for three minutes. And let me remind you that the hot water spout will definitely cook your rice. Um, you don't want to put too much water in your rice. You want to measure it correctly or it will get really uh, gummy. And this is the tricky part. When the rice comes out, <clears throat> cover it with the lid and let it sit until it's cooked, um, until it's almost dry. And then, since we're done with this, you cook it in prison. Is that kind of what inspired you to to do what you're doing now, going to school to become a cook? Well, yeah, and it, uh, it gives it gives me it just gives me a sense of feeling when someone tastes your food. When um, someone takes a bite and they're just like, "Oh my God!" It reminds them of home. So they're gonna be they're gonna it's like missing something that they ain't missed. And honestly, it's a little uh, it's a little bit different. You know, when you're in jail and you, you don't get the home cooked meals that you're used to. So now we're gonna take a, a chicken pack is what they call them in prison. They do sell chicken packs in prison. I like to open it like this. And I drain out all the juice. This almost reminds me of prison. All your meats will be already cooked. Tell us a little bit how you got involved in the prison system and while you're while you're cooking. Okay, well, my um, prison was. I'm gonna put a little bit more uh, goya on this chicken. It's about half a pack. You don't want to put too much. But um, and maybe a little bit of Mrs. Dash. But uh, prison for me, I got caught selling uh, crack cocaine. A friend of mine told on me, 
wore wire. Um, so I had a 120 month sentence. Um, I actually turned myself in, ended up going to a USP, it was unheard of. You don't usually hear about people going to a USPs with um, self-surrender. I actually had a self-surrender and I went to a USP. It was very difficult at first. First day I got there. Okay, pause for a second. We got this rice. Rice is uh, pretty fluffy, you see. Now we're just gonna put the lid on the rice for a little while. Let the rice cook. The rice is cooking now. It's cooking, the water's cooking. Okay, so we got the chicken seasoned. Chicken looks pretty good, huh? We're gonna move on to lemon pepper pink salmon. See, I thought I grabbed the regular one, but this will work. This is the same thing. It just has a little bit of flavor in it. With the tuna, I like to keep the tuna juices in because the tuna can get very dry, if you know what I mean. We're gonna just stick this chicken in the gonna stick this chicken in a microwave for one minute. One minute only. You don't want to dry your chicken out. Okay, we'll rinse off the spoon. Let's mix this up. Let's put a little bit of Minced onions. Already has lemon pepper, so we'll just go with a little bit of Mrs. Dash. We're gonna stir it up. You would honestly think that, you know, you're in prison and it sucks, but you gotta make the best of it, man. Um, either you could cook, make a good living off of cooking for other people or just if you have the money and the time just to cook and eat for yourself you know there'll be stuff from the kitchen that you can get as well that you can buy with stamps but uh like i said before there's something that you might not want to get caught doing there'll be eggs there'll be uh there'll be eggs and there will be um like baking powder and you know milk you might need milk or something okay so chicken looks pretty juicy to me that's just one minute in the microwave and it's not like really uh dry you want to keep the moisture in the meat at all times now we're going to go with the tuna tuna in there for one minute we're going to go one minute on the tuna rinse off the spoon okay I see the sausage this is my special trick I put sweet and sour in my sausage to give it a little tangy like bitter but it's good so we're gonna put just a little bit in there not a lot let's coat the meat and we're gonna just stir it up sausage is already cooked almost everything we're using you can purchase on commissary well yes this is true and it's going to open their eyes to a lot of things like wow man i didn't think i could get this or i didn't get i couldn't get that but in the end of it all there's stuff on there some might cost a little bit more and in prison we couldn't find mackerel um packages like they had in prison they had the jack max um it's just a cheaper fish a cheaper than tuna but it's a great fish people eat it right out the pack we substitute that for tuna so instead of uh, mackerel, we're using tuna. So it looks it looks like dog food, but it tastes like gourmet. You don't even know. But it's good. It's pretty good. Then I'll just mix up the tuna. Tuna's done. Tuna's already cooked. Um, got the flavor in there. Rice is still cooking. Usually in jail, prison, I will say. You're going to get two options, maybe three. They might have provolone. But for the most part, they'll have mozzarella and cheddar blocks. You can either chop your uh, cheese in little blocks. 
put in your burritos. But we're not going to do that because we have a cheese grater. But you can also make a cheese grater out of a tuna can. They will have uh, lids that they make them out of. There's ways of getting stuff in prison. You will know what I'm talking about because you'll see it all over the compound. There'll be a whole bunch of just kitchen gadgets that you'll run across that you'll be like, wow, this is amazing. I didn't know you could use this for that. But it is there and a lot of stuff. If you're in RDAP especially, because I took RDAP myself. If you're in RDAP, you don't want to get caught with no cutters. It's just, you can cut up every, anything with your, uh, your ID card. You can use your ID card to cut your cheese, your sausage, um, things like that. You don't want to get caught with no razor blades or you know, those lid cutters I was talking about before. But um, we're going to grate this cheese. It got a little easier because we're in the free world. Okay. What was, uh, what was RDAP for you as far as what, what, what did you imagine it being like? Was it easy? Was it hard? Okay, so... People think RDAP is easy. He asked me if RDAP was hard. Um, yeah, it's hard. It's not easy. Um, it takes a year off your sentence though, so it's a no-brainer, you know. Uh, RDAP is a little uh, strenuous at times. You gotta get up early in the morning. But when I first arrived to Sheridan camp, I still had like three years on my sentence, two and a half, three years on my sentence. And, uh, they wanted me to stay in the RDAP building the whole time. My personal preference would be to wait until it's your exact time to get in unless there's a long wait list. And some people come to the compound and cut you out. So if your date is short, get in there. Don't waste no time. Explain what you mean by cut out. Okay, so there'll be people that you, you'll be on the wait list and there might be 30 people on the wait list and there's only 15 for the next class or whatnot. Some people will come in right off the bus and bump you because of their date. Their date is ahead of yours and it makes you mad because you thought you were and then you go back up on the list. So it gets a little irritating. But RDAP is worth it. You learn a lot of tools. Tell us something that you learned from RDAP that you feel. Because you've been out for how long? How long you been out of prison now? Um, I've been to the in the halfway house since February... 2016. So tell us something that you learned and utilized from RDAP that you feel is helping you stay successful to do the right thing now even though we see other people clearly doing the wrong thing to make quick money. Well, I'll say uh, eight attitudes. It just makes you think different, you know. Um, do you focus? Thinking errors, thinking errors, you know, attitude checks. Because you catch yourself doing things that you, you know, you're not supposed to do. But, you know, you're a human. Mistakes happen. Things happen. And you just don't want to put yourself in a situation to go back to prison. For example, for me, like, I, I'm not going to do nothing that's uh, out of uh, pocket with my probation officer. Um, he has a mutual respect with me. And I'm um, trying to keep that. I don't want to put myself in a jam or anybody else in a jam by hanging out with somebody that I'm not supposed to hang out with. So I'll just ask for permission. If he says yes, he says yes. He says no, he says no. And I'm just have to respect whatever, whatever he is on his mind or however he feels about the situation. My friend, he knows I'm in culinary school and whatnot. So Dan, RDAP Dan, he called me. And I, and I was trying to start off a long time ago with him. He's was uh, RDAP Croson, which I had made all my stuff. but. He kind of pushed me to the side, but we'll talk about that another time, guys. Uh, <laughs> all right, so when Dan came to me and uh, asked me did he want to do a cooking show, I'm like, oh, sure, no problem. Um, let me contact my probation officer first and um, see what he says. And if he says it's cool, then we can do it and then we can go. So I wouldn't have done that before. I would have just went along with it and met up with him and made a cooking show. But... There's consequences behind everything that you do, so you got to realize that in a probation, if you want to get off early or even have a chance of getting off early or just getting along with your probation, you don't want to lie. So just keep that in mind when you do get released from federal prison. That's really good advice, Art of Prison. <laughs> We're using the good old traditional Rosita. Rosetta, is that how you say it? Refried beans. Show it to the camera. 
pick it up. No, you can't. Okay, so me personally, I like my beans thick like this. Um, there's a trick in prison that we didn't have the dry beans. People cook their beans in water. What I do with mine to make them creamy and smooth, I use milk, the dry milk, then add the water. Since we don't have that and it's already cooked, we got lucky. Put the beans in the microwave for about a minute and a half. Now, we're gonna move on to the tortillas, which they have. There's a 20 pack. They usually come about 10 or eight in a pack. We're gonna use eight tortillas. In prison, you wanna wrap your burritos and they have brown trifle uh, paper towels. Um, we actually don't have none right now, so we're not gonna use them. I'm just gonna show you the proper way to tuck and roll a burrito. Because everything is pretty much done. Let's check on the rice. So the trick was I told you to let your rice sit. Remember, the rice is already cooked. You're just hydrating the rice. And you remember all the seasonings we put in there. Now look at that. Don't that rice look good and fluffy? Don't that rice look good, y'all? Wow. If you could only smell the aroma from the seasonings I put in here. It was white, now it's orange from the Goya. So the rice is done. Check on the beans. Oh, great. Beans are done. Oh, what do you know? Now we're gonna put the tortillas in the microwave 30 seconds at a time. 30 seconds and then flip. Usually I put them in the bag, cook them in the bag, but it's a 20 pack of burritos here. We only have eight in the microwave. You might laugh at all this, but it's really, it's really gonna change your mind when you get in there and you're like, man, this sucks. I'm hungry. All I have is commissary. What can I do with this? So we have our our summer sausage, we have our tuna, and we have our chicken. And we'll mix and match some of them to make a different little flavor with them. And then we have our cheese. And don't forget the beans, y'all. Okay, so there's pretty, there's, I'm gonna tell y'all like this, there's pretty much unlimited amounts of hustle in prison. Anywhere from, you'll find someone to uh, cook for you, find someone to make your bed, clean your cell, um, do your laundry, uh, fold it, you know, just depends on if you got the money to afford it. So don't think you're going to go to prison and just be like, oh, I don't know how to do none of these home things. If you got money and you're willing to pay people for it, you'll, you'll get along just fine. And honestly, if you, don't, if you don't have money and there's people in there, of course, that will have money. So my thing is, you can turn their money into yours in a sense because if you cook for them, they're either gonna let you eat with them or they're gonna pay you. If you wanna wash somebody's clothes, you can make money doing that. I know people that make $100 a month washing laundry and this is no joke. So it's like $5 a week or something, maybe 10 depending on what kind of service you're gonna get. Um, people clean sales, they have cleaning crews like janitorial services, it's crazy. They're making $200 a month cleaning sales. They'll come in twice a week, wax your floor even, you know, so your cell looks spick and span. They'll make your bed, everything. So it's a trip, it's a trip. Don't look at prison as an all bad thing because there is good people in prison. But I'll just put that out there. Like hard up Dan. Mr. 5K1. 5K1. <laughs> okay. So first of all, we're going to show you all how to wrap a burrito. We're going to take a little bit of beans. Eh, not a lot. Just spread it. You know, I like to spread my beans on the 
on the shelf so you can get a bite thoroughly through. Then what we'll do, we'll make this one straight summer sausage. That's about a it's about good size. Then we'll put some cheese. The mixed cheeses that we had. Now, time for the rice. I like to put the cheese on the bottom and the rice on top just for the cheese don't fall out. And it's in the middle of a layer. So that's, this right here, this is a nice size burrito. This is plenty. You don't want to pack it to where you have problems. So, first technique to a burrito, you fold in. You push down push over, you fold, tuck, and then you turn and voila, you have an edible burrito. Now we're going to get on to the next. This one, you can do beans, if you don't like beans, you don't have to put beans, we'll make a couple without, and this time we'll go, we'll go chicken. A little chicken. Chicken. A little bit of sausage. So we have sriracha, we have salsa, and jalapenos. We're going to put a little bit of salsa in this one. You can also put it in after. I like to have mine inside of my burrito. So maybe a line of sriracha. Not a lot. You don't want to over exaggerate the rice. I mean the, uh, the hotness. A little bit of rice. Two scoops. There's plenty. Top it off with some cheese. Like I said, first time, you fold it in. And this keeps your burrito tucked. You fold, you push it in, you tuck it, and you just roll. And there you have it. One more edible burrito. Now we're going to go with some jalapenos. And remember, if you're cooking for people, the best filler in a burrito is rice. Rice and beans. If you're selling them, if you're eating them for yourself, it's cool to put as much meat as you want. But if you're selling them, just make them look fatter with the rice. But since we're doing uh, we're doing fish, we're gonna put some good tuna in here. Nice and fat. And what I do with my tuna, sweet and sour sauce. It's always good. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong with the sweet and sour. Now, cheese. First of all, you fold it in, you push down, you lift up, you tuck it, and you roll. So there's many ways of making burritos. Since we made the three and you got a visualization of that, we're going to show you how to make a, a larger size burrito, which uh, actually works pretty damn good. First things first, you get your tortilla, a little bit of water, and you wet it. Same thing. And 
water gives it moisture to, to stick. You don't want to get it super, super soaked. And you can put as many tortillas as you want. But we're going to make a burrito out of this one. Because we have five shells left. And I usually use five shells on mine. Cut them a little small, but we'll make it work. Remember, not too much water, just enough to, to dampen it to get it to get it wet. This is the stuff that they're not gonna show you on an average cook show. No one does it like RDAP then. And Mr. RDAP Croson. So now we're gonna get this. Let it sit a little bit. Press them in, and I usually use a piece of. In, in, in Sheridan, they have trash bags. We usually cut them up, and we'll slide it under. Okay, so I I use a trash bag. They have trash bags in prison, so I cut it to give it the same shape, size as this uh, burrito that we're going to make. And this is what keeps your burrito intact after you after you make it. All right, much better. So, before you make this, I you usually use plastic, but I didn't know we had none. We found some. So, now that we have the plastic in, we're gonna slide this over. And this is what they call a stramboli, or whatever you want to call it. And they like to put everything in it. So, what we're gonna do is we're putting everything in it. Beans. This is what they call the big boys. And this is usually for parties or whatever. You will see them. They like to season the outside. I usually don't. I mean, you can put a little bit of, I'll show you just so you know how it goes, matter of fact. So we're gonna get the plastic a little bit wet. Take a little bit of Goya. And this right here, don't use a lot. It's a sprinkle. So that's going underneath. This is going underneath. A little bit of Mrs. Dash. Fold it back. Damn. Since we did that side, we're going to do this side. I did a little bit backwards. You usually would put it under there already, but if you wanted to see the what what it what it looks like, I'm just going to give you the real look. Here we are. It gives it a little, just, you know, you know how you go to restaurants and they give you the little look and stuff. It's just a look. And, of course, a little flavor. Okay, so back to it. Now we're going to go meat. Let me use the rest of the summer sausage since we got to use it up anyway. This is going to be RDAP Dan's dinner for the next. He's a workout guru. I'll say he'll... He'll probably eat on this for about seven days. Segments. Might even bring it out on our next cooking show. Remember this? We'll find out. This is definitely gone in one sitting. No joke. Yeah, and then your your your, your stomach is gonna bust open because you're gonna be full. Like oh, we're gonna put the rest of the tuna in there. Spread it out. You, you might be amazed and be like, wow, they make stuff like this in prison? This was like a every weekend occurrence where I was at. People paid me to do this. We actually made more rice than we needed, but like so, I said. So would they, would they pay you or would you eat free? I would eat free. I'd get my own whole burrito 
which is probably twelve dollars or more in commissary, depending on you know. For everything that we made, give everybody basically for what we did today, run through the process of like not item by item, but what would this roughly cost? Kind of talk about that a little bit. Um. Well, it just depends on what you're putting in your burrito, how much everything will cost. You can make anything from simple burritos, rice and beans and cheese, which won't cost you a lot. But when you get up to the chicken packs, I think I remember, if I remember right, chicken packs were almost $4. So a couple chicken packs in here, that's eight bucks. You gotta figure your beans and rice, your cheese is like $2. So you're gonna be into, you're gonna be in probably, I say around $20 a commissary, but you'll get a nice, a nice meal for twenty dollars. Not no Applebee's or nothing, but it'll be a pretty good meal. And then we'll go with the rest of the cheese. And if you don't eat beef, they have turkey logs. You can substitute um, turkey, and they also have like pork carnita packs. So um, you can get the pork. The pork. So remember, I told y'all to wrap it like this. And this one, you can actually fold down. It's a little tricky, but I forgot something. Can't forget the sweet and sour. It's always good. I like to put the salsa on afterwards, like when you're eating. So now we're gonna take it up. We'll fold it. <clears throat> the plastic is like a guide. The plastic helps out a lot. When you're trying to flip this thing open. And remember, you always wanna tuck it in. I like to fold my tortilla part in right here. I like to always fold it in. So now you have it folded. And now you can take the plastic part and then you just roll it. You're probably like, oh my God, that's a humongous burrito. It actually is. Then I take it, make sure it's sealed, and I pull it back, and I wrap it the other way. Get some of the cheese out of there. And I'll take it like this, and I'll roll it. Plastic helps keep it together. Did you eat these when you were in there? Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't know. I didn't made know. one. I had them many times. Oh, you never made them? So the key to keeping them tight, you want to twist it. I always tie a knot on one end, well, both ends. But uh, like I said, I used to get paid for this. And then I just take it and do like this. They call them strombolis, but I call it a Husky burrito. So there we have it. And you microwave that? You microwave with the plastic on. So with this bad boy, you probably want to microwave this thing for about, oh, I say four minutes. We're gonna go four minutes. Stramboli. This is going to be some of the stuff that you're like, prison ain't so bad, but after you eat it, you might think about your family and, you know, you honestly want to share with them. It's just that good. So, it, it's, it's crazy to sound, to hear that, but it's real. It's real, man. Really all that's left is to dig in. So in four minutes, we will be eating a bite of this stramboli cut. All right, everyone, we're back. And uh, as you've seen, uh, we went through some real making. Um, this is what they call stramboli. 
Uh, me and RDAP Dan here are going to uh, cut into this thing and let you know. Caution, after you pull it out of the microwave, it is going to be hot. So what I like to do is get in there, cut it like this. Voila, magic. So, you said you only had one when you were in the uh, side. I uh, want to know, what do you remember what it had in it? Man, I'll tell you, uh, my buddy Herd used to make these all the time, and I was really into like the fitness thing, so I usually stayed away from them, but I ate one one time, and it was so damn good. I do not remember what was in it, and I am, Really excited. I haven't been this hungry in a long time. I know just, because you know you can make these with like pizza too. Like we can make a pizza sauce and put pizza, pepperoni, and cheese and you know make it kind of like a calzone or whatnot. So but for the most part they call them strambolis. I just call it a, a burrito. It's, a, it's an oversized burrito. This is, this is basically like one giant burrito. Yeah, one this thing's giant. big. I mean, look how big this thing is. This is not a joke. It's five tortillas, y'all. This is no special effects, no camera tricks. This, how many burritos was this? Five? Five shells. Five shells. Not laid on top of each other. This is five shells stretched out. This is a big burrito. So we're going we're gonna to cut into this thing. See that? That is insane. That is insane. Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing right now? So I'm gonna give Dan the first bit of burrito. Then I'll cut me off one. I just ate, so I don't want too much, but I'll eat a nice size one of myself. And you see, when you think of a burrito, a lot of a lot of meat will fall out to burritos and everything, but this thing's pretty solid. Cheese is melted, the beans and everything is in there. That is incredible. I, this is, I was looking really forward to making this with you, to be honest, but I did not think it was gonna be like this. So let's go see, let's, be, let's see what it's about. You might wanna put some sriracha, how many sriracha do you have a paper towel? <laughs> Please. Did you ever imagine you'd be having a prison meal at a table? Honestly, I don't want to, but it's good. Did I say promo history? I, I don't know. This is so good. Okay, so I can't think about what you're saying. So, so just you tell want, again. You want to put your... We are going to go ahead and wrap this video up. Uh, Croson, I want to thank you for coming and not only cooking for us and making some really banging burritos. Banging burritos. We call them banging burritos. Call them what you want. Banging burritos. But uh, also sharing your story about what it's like to get sentenced to 10 years and your experience from the pen all the way down to the camp. Um, we're going to be starting a podcast soon, and I think it'd be a lot of fun to have uh, Croson as a part of the team, on, uh, maybe as like a regular, like almost like co-host, whatever you want to call it. But, yeah, that'll uh, work. So, thank you. People call in? Uh, they can. People can call in. People yeah, can call in. That'd be cool. So, this was our RDAP Cooking with Croson special on um, burritos. And again, in about two weeks, what are we going to make next time, Croson? So I was thinking about pizzas. Or Calzones, maybe pizza stuff, crust pizza. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll figure it out. Um, we might want some dessert with this next meal. Oh yeah. So if you want, I know how to make brownies and cakes. Um, there's other little things to make. Pizza, uh, pizza and cake sounds kind of good. Yeah. yeah, it's filling too. Chocolate cake. I make chocolate cake. I'm just gonna, uh, make the chocolate cake. Man. Chocolate cake. All right. Well, Croson, thank you very much, brother. No it was a, it was a blast. Guys, I'm R. That Man, Federal Prison Time. One day at a time, people helping people, communities method. Peace. And next time we're going to turn cakes into cookies. <laughs> Later, guys.